anniversary of the bikini. How exciting. Can you guess what the very first two piece looked like? Well, stay tuned. The chat starts now. Welcome to the chat. I'm Tony Fox. Maria, Angelia, and Julie join the panel today. Henny's out on assignment. She'll be back next week. So how is everyone's fourth? We worked before we were allowed to go out and have some fun. Yeah. But how exactly. about you guys? Did you have a great holiday? It was good. Always good. I hang out at the beaches, so that's always a fun show. To just kind of, you can just, you know, park on a curb and just watch everyone <laughs> going down the People bike, watching, crashing, yes. walking. But it was, yeah. It was good. Were yeah, you at the beaches? beaches? Are crazy on yeah. Yeah. July. Well, we were at a different beach. We went to um, Tarpon Springs, where my family has a condo there, and had a blast with the kids. It's a, sort I of a bet. tradition for us. They do a golf cart um, parade on the 4th of July, so you get to decorate your golf <gasps> Fun. cart. Fun! That's really cute. There's like 40 golf carts, and 20 bucks at the dollar store will win you <laughs> the golf cart parade contest every year. I don't know. So, oh, that's not that. What's like the prize? Is it a good prize? Oh, hold on. My mic is not on. Oh. See, that's what happens when you take a potty break <laughs> right before you go on air. So Confessions. Okay. So we had a great time. We were at a condo in Tarpon Springs. We did a golf cart take parade. Um, yeah, it feels like Groundhog's Day in here. Um, and yeah, 10 bucks, 20 bucks at the dollar store, and we yeah. decorated our golf cart, and it looked Fabulous. Nice. Yes. Awesome. And I know, Angelie, you were talking yesterday mm -hmm. about going on a boat after we were done with the show yesterday. Well, it's mom's birthday. My mom, actually, her birthday is July 4th. So she's a firecracker baby. That's so right. we are always mm. having a blast on 4th of July. Yeah. So we're always out as a family. We're, you know, cooking out. We're on the, you know, boat. We're out any, we're anywhere and everywhere we can be right. to cause problems and trouble <laughs> and shoot off fireworks. Good. <laughs> nice. So, yeah, so we had a lot of fun. We well, happy really, birthday really to your mom. mom. I know. I know. Yes. Mom's really excited so yes. yeah it's, she it's got a, a great birthday shot out birthday. yesterday mm -hmm. and then she got fireworks everywhere I know. <laughs> so, that's right. that's awesome. yeah. all right ladies well let's start chatting I guess we should do that because that is what we do first <laughs> off a graduation policy that's getting mixed reviews this is a new requirement to graduate from a public high school in Chicago students will have to show that they've secured a job or received a letter of acceptance to college a trade apprenticeship a gap year program or the military. Now, some think this extra step could help to better ensure a graduate's future. Others argued against the extent to which schools should be expected to ensure their graduates receive further training. So, this is pretty major. Mm -hmm. I mean, they are forcing graduates to have a plan and prove it right. but they before should. they I can mean, graduate. They you, should. you think I mean, it's they, a, good, oh, a good idea? This is something that should have been implemented a long time ago in every school going to you know any kind of future, any child graduating. But with that being said, sounds like a good idea, but it's actually not for the kids. This is actually for the schools because the schools are graded by their numbers of their students going to college and especially graded on staying mm. in college for a year or longer. So, but not every kid that, in this particular thing has to show they're going to college. They just have agreed, to show they have some agreed, kind of plan. Agreed, but that's why they're trying to push the college situation is okay. what they're doing so that that way more people are saying, yeah, you know what, we're going to college. I'm going to college. You're going to college? And if you're not, then you're going to feel left out. So you're going to say you're going to college too. So they think it's, it's going to have to be your pressure. So I don't Type love thing. the fact that it's really not for the kids. It's fact. not like I, a true, yeah. the intentions but they're gonna, aren't quite pure. I agree. I, I think but so. But they're going to benefit from it. You, you know, even if it's not meant to for them, I would think. So. so here's the problem, I think. Yeah, I agree with you. It's an accountability piece for the school, just like our schools here are graded, you know, A to F. Mm -hmm. um, I have a, a cousin who is a, a principal in Cook County in Chicago. So we're talking about Chicago. We're not talking local schools. Um, but similar to Florida schools, the, the schools in Cook County and across the Chicago area have suffered tremendous budget cuts. So just last year, you had a 1,000 teachers who lost their 
jobs who were laid off. Um, when I talked to my cousin today, she said, you know what, in theory, this sounds like a great idea. Yes, in theory. Right, but when you take a thousand teachers out of the classrooms and out of the schools, you know, these schools are now suffering. Really, this plan should just be part of high school curriculum regardless, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, they should be talking to these kids because a lot of these schools that we're talking about are inner city schools where you have parents who may or may not be, um, you know, available to the children to really help mm -hmm. them map out a plan. Um, so it just seems like this is something that these counselors, these teachers should be helping them with regardless. But now you have schools that are missing a thousand teachers anyway. So she said the, the, the thought of this actually happening in our schools, it's not going to happen. It's well, just not. let me not. ask you this question. I mean, you know, take yourself back to when you graduate from college. Now, I was a person who, I, I was a kid who knew exactly what she wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Not just going to college, I wanted a major in television, radio and television broadcasting, and I did it. I had, I, I mean, that's what I wanted to do, hands down. But there are kids who don't know. Mm -hmm. And I'm not just talking about going to college and not knowing a major. They just don't know. Mm -hmm. right. What they about don't figure those it out kids? For, for even after when they graduate college, yeah, they don't figure I mean, it out. Right. And is it so horrible to not know? I mean, you're pinning 18-year-old kids, 17-year-old kids, mm -hmm. and saying, you need to know what you want to do for the rest of your life. That's huge. What if the kid doesn't know what they want to do? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, is this wrong to make a requirement like this when they really don't know. Right. I think you need to have a goal though, no matter what it and is. I mean, you've got to have a plan mm -hmm. in place. I mean, because if you don't have any plan whatsoever, I think you're just going to set yourself up for, fa for failure. Mm -hmm. So I think that you've got to have a plan. I don't, I mean, whether, I mean, my plan was to go to school for nursing. I went to JU for nursing. I didn't become a nurse. <laughs> sure, I did something but you else. had the plan. But yeah. my plan was at least in yeah. place. So you've got to have a goal, I think, and, and work towards something. Well, something else is getting mixed reviews is a new feature on Snapchat. The new Snap Map location feature allows users to pinpoint the exact location of their friends in real time, and it's causing some concern over the privacy feature. It's also being used to bust cheating boyfriends yep. and girlfriends. Mm. Social media is now filled with posts about users exposing their unfaithful significant others. <laughs> uh, I, I find this really comical that, that they're using this, you know, to bust their That they're so <laughs> dumb to get caught with this feature. Here's how it works, okay? If you're on Snapchat, like I'm on Snapchat, but I never use it, but here's what happens. Um, you go to the camera, feature when you open snapchat like let's say you're going to do a snapchat mm -hmm. so you got to take a picture so you take the camera and you take your fingers and put them like this and it opens up the map now it says right there that you have to allow your location to use it so when you do that you are now on the snapchat map now it's not a secret right now it will track you wherever you go. So if you're cheating, they're gonna find you. Because literally, I mean, it will. Have like, you, d have you done it? Each, no. Okay. No, because when I go to the map, I'm like, yeah, no, <laughs> I don't want you to know. Now you can do it. Let's say you do it and then you don't like it. You can opt out, but then you have to go and change the settings. Mm -hmm. But you have to specifically. It says it. Except it's not it. like a big in fine print or something like that. So for you to now get caught cheating. That's pretty dumb. Because you have to <laughs> opt in I mean, it says to get right caught. There. Yeah, and it, and it, it sees you, like, if you're in your car, going to an intersection, getting closer to someone's house. I mean, like, right there. It, it, it follows shows you. you. Yeah. Right. But the thing is, I mean, if you're a 15-year-old kid, you've got your friends already on Snapchat. Yep. You may not think that, oh, I shouldn't, I better opt out of this today because I don't want Tony to know where I am. They're not thinking that far nope, in advance. They're, not. they're thinking about that very moment. But the yep. thing is that parents need to know about this is this Snapchat map actually tells what your child is doing. It tells if your child is driving a car yes. to, toward the mall. It tells if your child is with a friend that also may be on Snapchat. It tells whether they're alone, maybe they're sleeping. It tells so many things that you are actually doing that you don't want other people to know. Maybe your friend is a parent. What do you want your kid uh, to know? Your kid let, knows? Me, let me put on my <laughs> yes. parental hat here oh, for yeah. a second. Because really, any parent out there that is not aware might not even be aware that their child is on Snapchat. Chat, let's yeah. just yeah. take a step back but isn't aware of this feature, they really, like you were saying, really need to be cognizant of it because um, I, like I was telling you guys earlier, you know, it's not if, if I 
tell my child to not enable that feature. But yet she's hanging out with a group of girls as she does. She's in a dance studio 15 hours a yeah. week. Mm -hmm. um, then it's the other parents that if their in inadequacy, inadequate, inadequacy. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> can you tell I was on vacation for five days? Um, you know, that they can get my child in trouble. Mm -hmm. So I'm so thankful that my daughter has a dance teacher who sent this out to all the parents and said, you know, basically they're with me all the time. Um, you guys need to know about this feature and, and disarm it. Oh, that's good. Wow, I'm struggling today. <laughs> um, because, I mean, but like you were saying, yeah, because it tells you everything that that child is doing, who they're with, where they are, oh, how does it and say it's who not with? safe. Because, because the other person will be, the other person is on, their, their friend, yeah. you know, I'm friends with you, yeah. we're both on Snapchat, right. we're both on Snapchat map, so when it shows me okay. hanging out with you, we but see, if you I'm know. I'm not on it, if it's not enabled for me, then if you're not on it, then it won't even address no, okay. you. But if she and I are both on yeah. it and we're together, then yeah. it's going to show that we're connected. Uh -huh. My point, and I will make this much better, <laughs> is moms need to talk. And, mm -hmm. you know, they, these adults who are have these children in their supervision, they need to talk and make sure that everybody is on the same or setting. Make sure that page. setting is off. <laughs> or it. they get no cell phone. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be torn on that one if I were a parent. All right. Well, something else that has a lot of people talking today, a mom who says she's getting death threats after claiming to have pierced her baby daughter's cheek. And Adina Vance posted the image, which has now been shared more than 12,000 times, saying, I'm the parent, she's my child, I will do whatever I want. I make all the decisions until she's 18. I made her, ooh, get this, I own her. However, the image was not all that it seemed, as the mother of six had, in fact, doctored the picture in order to make a point about circumcision. Yep, she says that that actually posted that dimple piercing picture to highlight her belief that parents shouldn't have the right to modify their child's body in any way before they're old enough to consent. Oh boy, this is a tough one. This is a you know, this it's is not a mother. Tough. No, it's I, not I tough. Like this but this one. is a mother who wanted something to go viral in order to make her point. So that's a tough circumstance to be in about circumcision. She's just trying to make this go viral so that it's known, so that this her mm -hmm. thoughts and, and actions are out there. Because she actually had her son um, circumcised in 1998. So so many years ago, she actually had her son circumcised. So I don't know if she's having a guilt complex that's now coming to life. Well, she is against How do you compare it? the so two? I'm she's... sorry. How do you compare mm -hmm. piercing a child's, a baby's mm -hmm. dimple to circumcision? Mm -hmm. I, I just think I, it seems you and I are probably going to be on opposite ends of this one. Oh no, but I'm never gonna agree too. <laughs> I, I think I think it's crazy. I mean you just can't make that comparison. And, well what and she's I, doing is saying that uh, she, what she's, she's not saying that piercing a dimple, what she's saying is the act of you yes. saying I can have this done to my kid because I make the decisions mm -hmm is the same as a circumcision is the same as piercing a cheek. For example, Just the fact then, that you are saying body mutilation. I'm the one that decides what my kid gets done. That that's how what her comparison well, is. Well, one poor example in my opinion. Yeah. Um, and two for in my opinion because now I know we're going to have all these people on the Facebook page saying what a terrible <laughs> mother I am. But, you know, when I had my son, I really feel like as Americans we were starting to adopt more eastern European sort of cultures and ideas and and circumcising really became like you don't do it anymore where for so many years a lot of people did do it yeah. um so i was like i was a little baffled like what do we do yeah um and i spoke we have friends who are doctors i went to my pediatrician who i love and adore and and, and really trust and when they started telling me stories about infections um, mm -hmm. that they've seen yeah. Yeah. to mm -hmm. me as a parent for my child to me it was a no-brainer right. um so it's one of those things i just think her her example was a poor example to you but i think she was also just trying to say that wait until you, you know before you do any kind of harmful thing but if i asked thing, my son too. today hey let's talk about your circumcision <laughs> no, no no what you should do is wait until they're old enough then they then can make they that decision. make the decision hey do i want to get circumcised but, that's what and you but, most times they're going to say no but well, but, see, but then, but at that age, then they're aware and will remember the pain and everything associated with it. Right. I so mean, for religious purposes, I, I believe whatever your belief is, that's what you do. Mm -hmm. um, but to make this example, I thought it was kind of ludicrous. My son wouldn't remember, doesn't remember. No, I, not saying that he, he doesn't feel he like would, he was but... mutilated. He's. <laughs> <laughs> but so she is that saying that you know you shouldn't have that attitude of you shouldn't make that decision for them right. they should grow that's what her point is right. and of course that's they're going to say no because they're 16 and that hurts <laughs> at 16 at six days <laughs>
<laughs> it still hurts. <laughs> he doesn't remember it. Well, it what still about, hurts. What about you know female mutilation though? When they when they start um, doing that down there to females, you know, like it, that's we that's not culturally acceptable. So I think it's just trying to make sure that we are being fair in that way when we're thinking of circumcision as well. I'll give you that. All right. All right. Well, coming up next, an idea thought up by two girlfriends that turned into a countrywide initiative. We're going to chat with one of the founders of Girl Trek, and that happens when we come back.